Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today I'm going to do a tag. I wasn't really tagged, but I was it was suggested in my comments that I might be this might be a nice tag for me to do. And it was Blue Bike and Doyle. He he did the tag and he left it as an open tag, so I'm going to leave it as an open tag. So anyone that wishes to do this tag um, you can just let us know that you've done it so we can watch it or chances are if you're a subscriber of mine I will have I will be watching it because I I do try to cover everybody's videos that I'm subscribed to which is a real chore let me tell you but I at least the ones that comment I always watch yours and then I go off on to others that I haven't seen in a while and hope that they're still around and then I when I go into their videos, I see, oh, gee, they haven't posted one in over a month. And I've already watched the one that they've got posted, or they're no longer posting, or I have three to catch up, so then I catch up on the three. It's it's a chore. But anyways, this tag, it's got five questions, but I probably am going to add an extra one. So if you feel like you want to add an extra one, you can add two. And it's what it's supposed to be, the five life changes, five things in your life that have that, that were big that changed um, like event changes things that I don't know if I'm saying it very good or not five events that changed your life that's the way it should be said five <laughs> events that changed your life that's good because I didn't write it down at all I just kind of wrote it wrote what happened in my life that maybe was kind of like a life-changing event okay now and there's I have actually six of them I guess the first one was I had a ruptured appendix in fourth grade when I was in fourth grade I was nine years old and that the what the ruptured appendix did was I had a whole month of no school no so when that was the one one report card that when he brought it home it said incomplete and um, I was on the honor roll up until that point and when I came back from my operation after being off a month my teacher that I had she was pregnant at the time and she was not very she wasn't a nice teacher she's one of the teachers that of all the teachers that I requested my kids not to have it was her because she just wasn't that into her students if you were real smart she loved you if you were struggling she didn't pay any attention to you well when I came back from after having my appendix out I had fallen way behind and thank goodness there was a, a substitute teacher. She went on maternity leave, and the teacher that came in, it was Mrs. Edgerton. I remember her name so well because she used to sit with me and tutor so that I could catch up because I was really behind. And when I was sick like that, today they would have sent a tutor out, and you would have had your homework, and you would have been kept up so that when you went back to school, you would be just right there with the rest of the kids. Well, when, I, when it happened to me, that wasn't something that they did they didn't even send the homework home so I was way behind and so because of that struggle in fourth grade my fifth grade was a struggle and my sixth grade was my next event so that's not, sixth grade will be number two and what happened in sixth grade is I was just passing by the skin of my teeth you know how you are really struggling but you you made it so the teacher and my mother had a little conversation and my mother said that she really wanted me to, to stay back the teacher felt that it was a good idea too because she said I would get lost up in seventh grade because in seventh grade at that time was when you went to middle it would be considered middle school seventh and eighth grade and I would have been changing classes and there would have been a lot of teachers and they would have not paid as close attention as the elementary teachers did so I repeated sixth grade that was all devastating because to to be considered that you failed was a really it was bad today kids fail and they think nothing of it because they're not they're never really held back I was actually held back in sixth grade and none of the kids in my class knew this I was a little person so I was smaller than a lot of the kids that I was in with even though they were a year younger and when I'd walk down the hall, we'd hear all these people saying, Hi, Gracie. And they'd say, How do you know all these people? And I said, I don't know. I said, Probably my brothers. 
and they all just kind of believed it, but they were really my former classmates. And nobody, nobody caught on. It was at the very end of the year that I finally said, you know, the reason everybody knows me is I was in sixth grade last year, and by then all the kids liked me, so I was, it was okay. I, I felt brave enough to tell them. And because I repeated sixth grade, it gave me opportunity in eighth grade to be in the band. I would have never been asked to join the band in ninth grade because I went directly from one month of French horn training because I took French horn. I went one month of private lessons right into the senior band. I was never in the junior band. And so if I hadn't repeated sixth grade, I would have never had that opportunity. Also, I feel that I would have probably missed out on going to cosmetology because the school could only take, because our school was a small school, one year they'd take one, one person, the next year they'd take two, and then they'd take one. Well, I happened to fall in the year that it was just one, and they made you take a test to see how talented you were artistically and academically and it was it was a real struggle so but I was the one that was chosen so I got to go to to the cosmetology school in my junior and senior year and I also got to be student of the month which I would have missed out on that also so I guess repeating sixth grade was a was a a, a good life a good thing even though it was a bad thing at the time. I hated if anybody asked what grade are you going in because people used to ask that and I really 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 dreaded that question. Okay then number three is was getting married. Now that changed my um, I was planning on going to nursing school but because I had almost got 10 years into the place where I was working my director of nurses said to me to just stay until I finished the 10 years then they could guarantee me a position. It might be a part-time position, but I could come back. But if I left at seven and a half years, they couldn't guarantee there'd be a spot for me because I was the last person hired full-time that was in my department. And so I ended up getting married, and so that changed that. I didn't go to nursing school. And then I had children, and with the children, now I decided I wanted to stay home and take care of my children, so I left that. It was a county job that I had. I left the county job to take care of my kids. I always planned to go back after, before five years was up, because if I returned within five years, I could stay at the same level um, that I was at. But if I didn't go back after five years, or before five years, I would have to reapply and start from the bottom again. Well, I ended up deciding that I wanted to have another baby, so I didn't go back. Instead, I had another child, so we ended up having four children. Then the fifth life thing is when I retired. I feel that that was a change in completely, and I have to thank Jane, because Jane, I, when I had mentioned that you lose your identity, Jane said that I could say, this is Jane Patrick, she's someone that comments on my videos all the time. She doesn't have a channel, but she does comment all the time. And I look forward to her comments because she's, she's a really wise lady. Well, anyway, she said that I could say when people ask, what do you do? And I will say, I'm an influencer on social media. And I thought, oh, that's, that sounds really great. But I got to remember it now because um, when I was like, people used to say that they're a housewife. You're not a housewife, you're a domestic engineer. And that took a long time to remember that one. But this one I will have to practice to say I'm an influencer on social media. And also, I wanted to mention there was a, a comment that was made. And it was a, f I broke out laughing because it was funny when I read it the first time. I don't know if it'll hit me funny again or not, but it did hit me very funny. And it's sort of sad because you missed out on this great big huge laugh that I did that was like I really, it. yeah. And it was from the best one A's ride, his comment. And it was on the one where I was singing and that I had sung happy birthday to Jim. And his comment was, if you aren't the chicken, you might be the egg. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. 
it's not hitting me funny this time, but it really, really hit me funny. Um, and the number six, I wanted to add one. And the reason I wanted to add number six is Blue Bike and Doyle added, said this one is his. And I thought, you know, that really is part of mine, too, that starting my YouTube channel was a, a, cha a real major life thing. It took me two years to put my first video on. I was I kept kept saying that I wanted to do YouTube. I wanted to do two YouTube, and my husband would keep saying, "Well, do it." And I says, "I can't do it yet." And finally, 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 the one day I said, "Well, let's set up the camera and let's see if I can do it." And it's such a ding dong, <laughs> it's a ding dong video. But I finally did it, and that's how it all began. And so, if you would like to do the the tag with the five life-changing events just do it because it is kind of fun and we learn a lot about you that we wouldn't know it's a way of learning something about somebody like you learned a lot about me just now and um i think that was it was that it that i wanted to do i did i think i did everything i mentioned the the thing with jane i wanted to mention that and i mentioned that the it's d best one A's ride. I wanted to mention his comment because it was really, it hit me funny. So that's it for today and I'll talk to you. Oh, if you stick around, I don't know if it's going to be there or not, but maybe after I say goodbye and my little, before my little music starts, there might be a little video there. I'm not sure. I have to decide. I'll see how long this one is first. And then it might be there. And if it's there, you can comment that you saw it. If it's if you didn't see it, well, you didn't see it. So I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye. I had a request to short, sort of show my day. Well, I'm going to show you my coffee. This is how I do it. There's already been a cup of coffee in there, but look at this. This is the part I like, the cream, the foam. Doesn't that look so good? And that's my coffee. Every day, a couple times a day, like maybe six or seven times a day, I have a lot of coffee. Are you going back in? I let the girls out and the boy and rooster out because it's actually pretty nice, but this is all the ground that they have. They don't have very much ground. I have been dreading to take out this coffee grounds to the compost pill because I haven't wanted to go outside. Today's not as pretty. See, there's a lot of snow. I actually put my boots on. I'm wearing my big sweater. It's not real cold, but it's dripping. It's sort of raining drip. I won't go out. Oh, I really didn't want to do this. It's not as easy carrying a camera and going out. I'd be switching hands. Oh, there's some little footprints here. Something's been around. Big footprints, those are probably gems. Okay, this ought to be a trick. Stick you in the snow and see what you get.